uh, and we're back. We'll just continue with the paper we were doing. So, um, jam and honey are substitutes. Honey and beeswax are in joint supply. Cetris paribus, what will be the result of an increase in the price of jam? So let's just look at things one by one. So you have jam, you have honey, and these are substitutes. If the price of jam increases, so because jam is more expensive, um, people should switch from jam to honey, right? Because honey is at least relatively uh, cheap in uh, because the price of jam has increased. Ergo, since people switch to honey, the demand for honey will increase. Um, the only issue here is we haven't been given you know the, the options in demand, which is fine. If demand for something increases. Almost always, the price be increased because if you just look at a normal demand and supply diagram, you have demand, you have supply, you have pricing quantity. If your demand increases, um, it's, a, it's a, like a small diagram, but anyhow. So let's say your demand increases, it does that by shifting to the right. You can clearly see how the price has also increased from you know, the, the old one to the new one. So we can very well say that the, an, an increase in the price of jam in, leads to a contraction in its demand. However, people switch so to the substitute, so substitute की demand बढ़ गई and hence price भी बढ़ गई. So either C and D from this. Okay, honey and beeswax are in joint supply. Sorry, yeah. Uh, so honey and you know patani kya chida beeswax okay joint supply again the production of one leads to the production of the other as well it just results in that so we're seeing increase in the price of jam uh, okay so jam ki price increase hone se hua kya hai demand for honey has increased and another thing we can see from so if you just draw a basic diagram um say uh, demand supply if the demand for something has increased because they're talking so you're saying honey and beeswax are in joint supplies they're not talking about jam here so if we increase price here sorry increase demand here yes price would increase but the quantity supplied as you can see by the movement in the supply curve the quantity the equilibrium quantity, which is the quantity supplied in this case, uh, that also increases. So the units that are being produced, that also increase. Um, another way to look at this is just to forget everything and just look at that. We have first part that you know, honey ki price barrier. If you can also just look at it like that, you know, the price of honey is increasing. So the quantity supplied should also increase. Uh, simple law of supply. Iski units zada ho rahe, so iski production zada ho jaani chahiye. Supply should increase because as you produce more units of this, you generally you in directly increase and affect the production production of beeswax because they are in joint supply. If the supply of something increases, the price should fall. Uh, if you can use, we can draw another demand supply diagram. Demand supply. Increases to the right, and as you can see, your price would fall. Right, so supply increases, price falls, so hence price of beeswax should fall, which means the answer is C. Okay, let's go to 12. For price to act as a rationing mechanism, okay, so that press mechanism, you know. For a final product, the effect of a rising price must be two, and we'll get to it in just a bit. Okay. Um. First thing, don't mix up the rationing mechanism of price by the means of distribution of rationing. You know, weight listing, queuing, rationing. But the alternative allocative mechanisms both different. Rational is different. Rationing mechanism of price is different. Basically, the rationing mechanism of price is the idea is that if there is a shortage 
or if there are you know more units being demanded than supplied price should increase and hence ration out those units uh, you know kami hai kisi cheez ki so we saying people who can pay for it pay a higher price in this case they can buy it and everyone else can just get lost that is the basic idea of you know how you ration out limited products and that's a rationing mechanism of price so you have price you have quantity and you have let's say your demand and let's draw the supply curve in a different color in fact um and let's say supply and the reason i'm using a different color is because the original demand curve is soon to become uh, uh irrelevant here let's just say the effect of a rising price let's say, say for example uh, the rising price came about by an increase in demand eh? for it to the rationing mechanism ke liye wo that's what uh, would need to happen so demand increases to d1 right and now now here look at it this was your original price and now i just want you to forget the old demand curve because it's not relevant you have a new one but let's say yahi price at for some time yahi price set here meaning you have this is your quantity demanded because that's where price intersects the demand curve and this is your quantity supplied because that's where price intersects the supply curve we're just ignoring the old demand curve because that's not relevant anymore this is the particular horizontal distance of shortage because the amount you're demanding is more than the amount is being supplied shortage hai, so price needs to ration out these limited products uh in such a in, in a way that basically ensures that there is there are, the shortage goes away that places an upward pressure on price which is what they were talking about oh sorry ha huh? so ye shortage mein that this is the rising price they were talking about so yeah, and that extends your supply because price and quantity supplied for a positive relationship but the more important thing here more relevant to the rationing mechanism of price is how it contracts demand that is how if price increases your quantity demanded decreases how agar aap kuch cheez hi cheez ko mehanga kar doge you can ration that out because not everyone will be willing to pay the higher price so uh what attract okay so effect of a rising price must be to attract new firms into the market oh that might be able to increase supply but again that's not uh, what the rationing mechanism in particular is interested in uh effect of a rising price must be to generate additional profit for the producers again not what we're interested in not even I'm not even sure I'm not even sure if that's correct generally reduce the quantity demanded by some individuals true signal the need for redeployment of labor um no that is that is correct a correct statement it is not correct in lieu of this question that is the signaling function of price how an increase in price either you know attracts uh, new producers or signals the need for redeploying other you know labor into this particular um in uh, okay, i guess yeah, like in this particular the production of this product because here there's higher prices which would attract you know either new firms or signal to already existing firms to you know deploy labor into the production of this particular product but those are qs factors when right? those that's the signaling function in fact um so let me just write that down here so when you and that could be true for part b as well so the signaling function that is how you in, you know into how price mechanism interacts with the suppliers and affects quantity de uh, demanded for rationing as is denoted by r uh, you you have to look at quantity demanded for signaling you know look at quantity supplied rationing look at quantity demanded uh, so we have 12c yeah a well known clothes retailer decides to have a summer sale as a result the number of people who use the shops increases okay so uh, quantity probably increase over here of people which area measures the change in consumer surplus for the consum for the customers who would have bought clothes anyways so that's all these customers existing customers as the question has done and the surplus for the new customers and we don't okay, don't get consumer surplus nahi nikalna change nikalna hai and i'm sure they'll have a correct answer in somewhere here which shows consumer surplus existing in new ka bilkul perfectly but change nahi dikhata okay so pehle ye price thi 
फिर प्राइस कम हो गए फिर ये प्राइस थी नोट एट कंज्यूमर सरप्लस इज बेसिकली लाइक यू नो द एरिया अबव द ओप्स अबव द मार्केट प्राइस बट लाइक बिलो द डिमांड कर सो यू हैव लाइक स्टफ लाइक स्टफ ओवर हियर सो एट द ओरिजिनल प्राइस द कंज्यूमर सरप्लस पहले वुड हैव बीन बेसिकली योर एरिया जे सही तो पहले था बिफोर द समर सेल यू हैड समर सेल सो टोटल इंक्रीज इन कंज्यूमर सरप्लस इफ यू थिंक अबाउट इट um again just just look at it like look at it above the mark below the demand curve but above uh, the the market price so now your consumer surplus is this right j the pay theta the total increase in consumer surplus would be k plus l correct so basically existing and new customers will share k plus l which kind of indicates the already c because K plus L, A की M N N तो नहीं है, ये K plus L A की दिखा रहा है। Um, so just to repeat, original price पे ये triangle था consumer surplus, new price पे जब price कम हो गई, तो ये पूरा बड़ा triangle consumer surplus है। Because change की बात कर रहे हैं, कर रहे हैं तो K plus L is the overall change in consumer surplus, which then has to be divided between existing customers and new customers. So just by looking at the options, we can tell it's C, but we'll still do it properly. Let me drop drop this just for a second. Yeah. So the so at the original price, it was this particular quantity of people were were consuming. Let's call these quant Q E because you know they're uh, the existing customers. And जो नए वाले लोग हैं जो इधर आए होंगे like you know this these ये तो पहले ही कर रहे थे original price पे sale price पे नए वाले लोग आए हैं. So let's call these Q N the new customers. Basically, the area, the the distance from QE to QN, that those are the new customers. So, if you just look for QE, their original consumer surplus was J. Abhi kya hua hai? You have to look at the, uh, uh, at the area above the sales price, but you can't exceed the quantity because ye to itna hi consume kar rahe, right? And you'll go all the way up to the market demand curve. So J plus K. <coughs> so for QE. The overall consumer surplus that is new is J plus K. However, J to pehle hi tha. We want to find out the change. So for Q E, that is the exist the existing the quantity of existing customers. <coughs> consumer surplus would be change in consumer surplus would be K. If you look at Q N, <coughs> again, so we just want to be interested looking at in ki apni. In fact, let me use a different color. Uh, yeah. So we're just going to be looking at in ki apni quantity, and at this and above area above the pr price level, and below the demand curve. So in ka l hi hoga, uh, and the reason for that is because since they're new, since they're the new customers, in ka change be or matlab their 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 entire consumer surplus would be dependent on the you know like new say uh, the the new low price. Uh, so the change and the overall consumer surplus for them would be the same, uh, giving you L. So that's there was, those are two ways you could have solved this question. One was more Jugaru, the next one was more concept wise. So in 2014, some supermarkets reduced the price they were willing to pay farmers for milk. So in you know, order price come kar di jo ye they were willing to pay farmers for milk. Below what was then the equilibrium market price, so below the market price, they passed the lower price onto the consumers in order to try and encourage them into the store. Second, mm -hmm. the government then fixed an effective minimum price, which the supermarkets had to pay the farmers. Understand when we talk about effective minimum price, we mean above equilibrium. Why is that? Because minimum price is like a price floor. It's like you know, come as come. इतनी प्राइस तो होगी इससे ज्यादा हो सकती है नो डाउट बट इतनी तो होगी सो सो दिस वुड बी एन इफेक्टिव मिनिमम प्राइस अबव द इक्विलिब्रियम बिकॉज़ व्हाट यू यू एक्चुअली हैड सम इफेक्ट ऑफ एक्चुअली यू नो इंपोजिंग द मिनिमम प्राइस बिकॉज़ पहले ये चल रही थी अब भी हमें बोल रहा है कि इससे एंड इससे ऊपर होगी इससे नीचे नहीं हो सकती इफ लाइक अ ट्रॉट यू जस्ट प्लेस द मिनिमम प्राइस हियर यू लाइक इससे एंड इससे ऊपर होगी बट ब्रो इससे ऊपर ऑलरेडी मिनिमम प्राइस ऑलरेडी मार्केट प्राइस नॉट एक्चुअली बिंग अवर एनी चेंज देर इज नो इफेक्ट ऑफ योर मिनिमम प्राइस 
hence it's not an effective minimum price. And for maximum price, though, price level, for ma a maximum price that is imposed below the equilibrium, just reverse the logic. So if we look here, they haven't told us which action is which, but we know the minimum price for it to be, since it was an effective minimum price, it has to be imposed above the equilibrium. So it will either hold And just supermarkets, wali, wali, wali baat thi, they, 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 the price that they were willing to pay that was below the market equilibrium. So like that's let's call supermarket price SP here. Because you know equilibrium is which is here. So now we know which one was the minimum price, which one was the supermarket price. What would be the outcome after the supermarket action and then the government action? So let's see. Um Let's look at supermarket action first. So we'll just see where this intersects. So we have this as QS because it intersects the supply curve there. We have this as QD. Right? So quantity demanded is 17. As uh, quantity supplied is 4. You're, you're demanding more units than you're supplying. So this is a case of shortage where the shortage would be 17 minus 4, that is 13, or 13,000. So you either C or D for supermarket action. Now let's look at government action. So we just again slide the price and figure out where it intersects. So this is where it intersects the demand curve. So this is QD. This is where it intersects the supply curve. So this is QS. Your supply you're supplying more units than you're demanding. So it's a case of surplus, you know, there's more units being supplied than we are demanding. And you're supplying 13, you're demanding six, 18 minus six would give you your answer, which is seven or 7,000 if you take the thousand here. So it gives you D. So 14 D and we're good. The initial market subsidy Thing. So the initial market for a product is rep represented by demand and supply diagrams D1 and S1. So if you look at it, P was the original equilibrium because that's where the original supply and demand diagram uh, curves intersect, which are D1 and S1. A subsidy is then introduced, okay, which should increase supply because it decreases cost of production. Uh, and supply increases to the right, and that's basically what they've said. What is the incidence of the subsidy for the consumer and the producer? So incidence is basically if per unit subsidy dekha jaye, so kitna amount consumer prefer hai, kitna amount producer prefer hai. Very similar to your producer benefit, consumer benefit, producer burden, consumer burden, the stuff that we, we used to study. So the same way as for an indirect tax for a subsidy, the per unit subsidy can be denoted by the vertical distance between the two supply curves. Uh, I mean, these supply curves are parallel, so you could just take out the vertical distance from anywhere. The per unit subsidy, or this will be called parallel shift. The reason I chose this is because either, you know, so I think this will help us lead to the answer. Um, the first price level was this. Why, how do I know this? Because that, this is the old equilibrium. So, what is the price level? This is the price. It is so How do I know this? Because this is the new equilibrium. And we're looking at producer and consumer incidence. The first thing always in, I, I'll do the tax diagram as well after this question. So first thing always, just look for consumer incidence. Or if you were just to multiply by quantity, the consumer benefit rather. Um, consumer incidence is jitna, jitna price pe change aaya. So yeah, price pehle ye thi, idhar aara tha, ab price ye ho gaya. So this particular amount, is going to be your consumer incidence. It was it not benefit consumer ka hua hai, because consumer ka benefit is linked with the price of the product. Price itni kam ho gai, consumer ka benefit ho gaya. So RQ, or they've written it as QR, so QR is your consumer. Why? Because that's, put, that's where your price has decreased. So we'll always go for the consumer first and just look at the price decrease or increase. And the rest of the per unit subsidy remaining is obviously your producer because uh, someone has to take it. So yeah, this is your producer incidence or producer uh, per unit benefit. So QR is for consumer and TR is for producer and your answer is B. I'll just do a quick diagram for 
taxes as well indirect taxes this is the same logic though so i have supply bana diya i have supply plus tax bana diya which is where supply come aati hai and you know you should ideally have a demand curve as well so say so yeah, this is what has happened because supply decreases with indirect tax this was your initial price fair price has increased and if you look at it so this was your per unit tax because it's a vertical distance right um and i'll just draw the new price of the distance to set this first of all always always go for the consumer consumer ka idhar fayda to nahi idhar nuksan hai idhar burden kya hua hai jitni se price increase hui hai consumers only be concerned with that right the, the price has increased this much so that's the nuksan that's it's in consumer incidence of tax so this is your consumer and then whatever is left you just put the producer there that's it really as simple as that so just always go first for first with the consumer and look at the price change and that would give you the consumer wala and the rest is producer what is the most likely um purpose of a government making transfer payments um before we go on transfer payments are those payments that are made you know without any provision of a good or a service so like if your dadhi amma from the u from wherever send gives you a little pocket money that's a transfer payment because she's not expecting any good or service from you in return however if you get a carpenter at your home and you pay him money that is not a transfer payment because you just paid him for the service that he's provided right um here we're talking about government transfer payments so stuff like it a social security benefits it like bola gaya hai to unemployed workers you know stuff like unemployment benefits and so on right so what is the most likely purpose so the most likely intention behind the government making such transfer payments what does it want to do and what you know it could want all of this but the most likely um to encourage a change in income distribution and this is probably your answer because you the reason why you do give stuff like unemployment benefits is because you want the unemployed uh, to be to have a little more income than they otherwise would and the way you fund this is that you progressively tax so you tax those at the top and you spend on those at the bottom and hence you help make you know you help decrease income inequality so that's probably it um to increase the government's revenue no how would expenditure increase the government's revenue to keep the principles of the free market economy no because this is a form of government intervention this is goes against the idea of a free market economy where there shouldn't be intervention to let all citizens enjoy identical living standard so i understand if you get confused between a and b because you know, you are like oh living standard you know hum spend the paise dene um identical to phir bhi nahi hoga because uh, like all citizens is a bit of a stretch as well but identical to kabhi nahi hoga because you are you know uh, unemployment benefits and stuff like that they never equal to the wage that they could have been earning had they been employed um well namely because a government were it in a ke vaas itna paisa nahi hai but even agar paisa hota you don't want to give them unemployment benefits itne sare zyada that they don't even want to work anymore right so unemployment benefits by very nature they try to they they're there but they, they're never going to be as much as your as a put as the going wage rate because otherwise you'd just have a lot of sexual unemployment so we just go with a okay so let's go with 17 in the diagram b is the demand curve of the agricultural commodity okay and s is the initial supply curve so what we can see that s is consistently shifting shifting to the right so means s is consistently increasing so yeah the government promises to maintain farmers income at least at this initial level this harvest the harvest in four subsequent years are shown by supply curves s1 to s4 how much in total would the government need to pay to support farmers over the four subsequent years now understand what government bol kya rahi hai bol rahi hai ki jo farmer ki income hai at the initial level hum wo maintain karenge farmer income agar hum kaise dekhenge hum total revenue se dekh lenge Um, we don't have any idea of cost structure, so we'll only go on total revenue at the initial level. Initial equilibrium was this, 
सो इनिशियल लेवल पे टोटल रेवेन्यू क्या था प्राइस इनटू क्वांटिटी द रेक्टेंगुलर एरिया सो 5 इनटू 1 सो इनिशियल वाज 5 सही है सो वेयर एवर इन अ सब्सिक्वेंट ईयर द टोटल रेवेन्यू अर्न गोस बिलो 5 द गवर्नमेंट विल प्रोवाइड द डिफरेंस सो इफ द टोटल रेवेन्यू अर्न इज लाइक 3 और 4 द गवर्नमेंट will uh, pay you 2 and 1 respectively um well 5 maybe not 5 it's 5000 because either one nay there are 1000 well like we can just call it 5 full to be simple either total revenue dekho this first year ka either to 8 hai so either the government would have to pay anything it won't take the extra income away that's not the idea but like we're saying ke you know at least ye initial level maintain karenge so isse kam hoga to we'll provide So if it ever goes below five, that's where we should be worried. Which it isn't even here because three into three is nine. Well, let's look at it here. Two into four is again eight, so that doesn't help. I mean, the the in farmer's income is is above the the initial level, and in the last year farmer's income is back to the initial level. Again, it's never gone below the initial level. So the government has never really had to help maintain farmer's income. I never really had to intervene and pay them any money. Like, if 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 So, if it goes below five, that's why they're they're you know interfere. So eighteen, which circumstance is not likely, not we have likely we have okay. So not likely to represent a strong case for an industry to be nationalized. So they literally could not have phrased this, and you know in a, in a worse way. So, so let's ignore the not for a second. Which circumstance is likely to present a strong case for an industry to be nationalized? Which circumstance is not likely to present a strong case for industry to be nationalized is basically going as, which sort of case, which sort of argument is weak. We are looking for a weak argument for nationalization, a weak argument for nationalization, which is a not a strong argument for nationalization. So A in the private sector, so you see, this can be industry private sector. We have specified. in the private sector the industry would cause significant inequalities of supply between different areas of the country so you know kahin zyada supply karegi kahin kam karegi kahin zyada provide karegi kahin isliye nahi karegi to me this seems like a pretty strong case to nationalize i mean if inequality to supply aa rahi hai when the industry is in the private sector again so isse better i'm nationalize kar lo taki you have some equality of supply so uh, i don't see how that's a weak case um the industry would allow firms outside of the industry to enter easily so if they mean the industry um when it's nationalized would okay not likely to okay so कह रहे हैं जो इंडस्ट्री है इट अलाउज फर्म आउटसाइड दी इंडस्ट्री टू एंटर इजिली मतलब आराम से दूसरी फर्म इंडस्ट्री को एंटर कर सकते हैं मोनोपलाइजेशन इट्स पिटी कंपेरेटिव और कंटेस्टेबल इंडस्ट्री इफ सो या दिस इज दिस इज डेफिनेटली अक आर्ग्यूमेंट टू नेशनलाइज बिकॉज If the industry had been, you know, uh, if there had been high barriers to entry, if it was not contestable, competition if it was not, monopolization, that those are the cases where that you know those are arguments that are strong that really advocate that yes, you should nationalize that in particular industry. If the industry allows firms outside the industry to enter easily, entry and exit is easy, so then what tension is? So like using this, like. This is this just shows that you should leave it as it is. So you, this is a weak argument to nationalize. Hence, it is not likely to represent a strong argument. Uh, so this should be our answer. Let's go to the other ones, anyways. C, the industry would be unprofitable as a private ex- enterprise, but generates large benefits for the rest of society. So which is not a weak argument. It's a pretty strong argument. We're not looking for a strong argument. 
so yeah agar benefit rest of society kar rahi hai to you want the government to be controlling it because if it's unprofitable as a private enterprise shayad they might not produce as much but since it generates large benefits positive externalities you would want the government controlling it uh taki it it you have you have uh, you know you're allocating properly um the industry would experience such economies of scale that it can only support one firm so understand if the industry experiences such economies of scale like you know your basic utilities water electricity that it can only uh, i mean the basic utilities may such things are normally seen where natural barriers aise hote hain ke the the industry ke economies of scale um are such that you can require a large amount of output to truly benefit from economies of scale um even in stuff like the steel industry like st so usme the fixed overhead costs are so much so much so much that you want this one or two firms so that they can produce at such a large output so that you can spread their overheads and that's just the nature of the economies of scale right um so that i can only support one firm but here uh, this wasn't even very relevant for you bola gaya ki support it can only support one firm support one firm it can only support a monopoly now if there is a monopoly basically bol rahe hain ki bhai this industry only has a monopoly right was so etc monopoly can be exploited as it can uh, manipulate it can earn super normal profits by restricting supply increasing price because the demand for its product would be pretty in- in- inelastic um so in that case it can really exploit the consumers right the government does not want that normally when the government sees monopolies it either wants to really to break their power to have proper oversight on them or to nationalize them all together so the fact that there is a monopoly does lead to a pretty strong case for nationalization um which is not a weak case not what we're looking for so the answer would be b because agar industry in a competition here so you, that's a weak case for nationalization you don't really need to nationalize that right 19 how does a rise in the price of factors of production affect the as sub as curve okay so know this um factors of production zyada mehenge ho gaye so yeah because price is increased so it's more costly to produce right so if you look at the as curve let's look at real output here and let's 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 take not price but price level right and you know Can, if you draw short on AS like this, or you could draw you can draw a stack curve. That's that's not an issue, right? Um, so we're we're saying that if factors of production the price in Berge is more costly to produce, uh, so your AS curve, just like your supply curve, should decrease because cost of production has increased. Meaning, if you really look at this, and this is how it logically makes sense. at each and every price level as let's look at one price level you can produce less output than you could before pehle you could do perhaps o and we're talking about the entire economy right however now you can only produce o1 because at that particular price level since it's become more costly to produce us price level pe you at you would only you would be able to produce less output which is why your aggregate supply curve should decrease should shift to the left I shift to the left of the aggregate supply curve, and we're good. Um, notice there can't be movements because, like supply curve, the movements are brought about by price changes. So why axis be two sixty? Uh, or in even on a macro level, the y axis series can bring about movements, right? So like, if price level. of the prod of you know of the economy usme bahut farak aata hai then you could get a movement but if you're just having a change in price of factors of production so then that wouldn't really affect the price level that much because price level is like you know uh, you know the the general price of like the all of the products in the in economy agar wo usme farak aa raha tha to fir shayad koi movement ho sakti thi but in this particular case movement to nahi ho sakti to shift hi hoga and since it's becoming more costly to produce then yes it will decrease that this should shift to the left so we have c so 20 on um, in a diagram ad is an economy's initial aggregate demand curve 
you can see here it's shifting to the right which means ad is increasing the same way your normal demand curve shifts to the right to increase what could cause a, the curve to shift to ad2 a decrease in real wages okay so i understand how people might be confused with this understand the difference between a cause and an effect so yeah we're looking for a cause here uh agar wages wages kam hongi to in fact usse aapke bas purchasing power kam hogi consumption kam hogi all of that type of stuff if you look at ad um since ad is c plus i plus government expenditure plus net exports which in case you were curious is basically your export revenue minus your import expenditure not the quantity right so if real wages decrease aapki purchasing power real income kam ho gayi you would consume less if you're consuming less either kam kar rahe ho to ad should decrease not increase what people might even be fused on they could think ki acha nahi shift ho raha hai increase ho raha hai to increase in ad leads to you know like price level increasing inflationary pressures inflation aayega to real wages will go down that is the might be the effect of increasing ad that is not the cause of increasing ad so just don't get confused with that an appreciation of the currency now this is interesting so this could be the answer because if the currency gets it appreciates i won't write this but just follow my chain of thought so if the currency appreciates what happens your export prices or let me just write this uh your export prices i'm not talking about revenue here i'm not talking about this this x this x and this m their their revenue and expenditure the price and the quantity i'm just talking about price export price badh gayi your import price decreased so if you remember the micro concept of pd if the your the demand and for your exports and imports is you know relatively inelastic then export revenue should increase and import expenditure should decrease if if it's an inelastic case why um while that will will be going off on a bit of a tangent just 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 review pd ka you know usefulness of pd to a producer and you should hopefully get it uh, or we can just do it in some other video sometime so and but if it's however if it's elastic if the demand for exports and imports is elastic then increasing price should only reduce your export revenue and increase your import expenditure so in this particular case agar demand elastic hai so yes ad would increase so this could be correct in this particular case demand uh, sorry the inelastic may ad would ad would increase and if it's relatively elastic ad would decrease uh and this links to the marshall learner condition which pretty much said the same almost the same thing right um so is this the correct answer uh, to be honest i don't know it could be if all the other two are incorrect but if the other if any of the other two you know seems correct then pretty easily galat kar do because appreciation doesn't necessarily mean ad increases it could mean ad increases it could mean ad decreases like so an increase in the money supply yeah so uh, appreciation nahi hoga money supply increase hoga i'll explain this in just a bit uh, let's just get d out of the way because an increase in the price level again understand that what, what what i was saying in the last question price level changes would have movements agar price level bad gaya a bad gay price level so you would have a movement on the ad curve you wouldn't have a shift because you know why excess wali cheez hai increase in the money supply so let's look at this sahi se now money supply se ad kaise increase hoga when money supply increases uh i'll take my time with the explanation of this so when money supply increases your interest rates decrease they follow an inverse pattern why is that so well you can do that through a diagram let me just rub this back to stuff yes tum tum log kar do sahi you can there's there are two ways to understand this one is diagrammatically and the other i'll explain intuitively and you'll study all of this in a2 it's not really that much there in as but let's still try to explain it so let's say you have interest rates and you have the quantity of money and you have your quantity um i am just drawing a line where the line nahi hoti but let's just say this is the demand for money i just drew a line for to make it simple and then you have the supply of money which is relatively fixed because um central bank supply karti hai now we're seeing supply of money increases shifts to the right 
So it's very clear to you why interest rates should decrease. So if money supply increases, interest rates decrease. That's diagrammatically. Um, another way to look at this is intuitively, if you think about it, agar zada money supply, money supply is basically you are, there's more liquid cash in the economy now, right? There's more liquidity. Agar liquidity zada hai, look at it from terms of commercial banks. So if liquidity is more, commercial banks don't really need you to save in them that much. They don't really need your money that much, right? So what they do, they just reduce the interest rate because so wo aapko itna zyada high interest rate kyun de when they don't really need your liquid cash because there's so much liquidity in the market, in the economy anyways, right? However, when commercial, now that there is such, you know, such great amounts of liquidity in the economy, the commercial bank can afford to lend more of that liquid cash to people who want to borrow. And he can, it can afford to have more competitive low interest rates so that they can take more loans from So the interest rate will come to afford for even lending, which is why liquidity is more than you know, interest rate come. On the flip side, if liquidity is less, um, money supply is less, that would push up interest rates. Why is that? Because if liquidity is not commercial bank has not liquidity, then it would, he would, the bank would want you to save in it, right? That it gets access to your liquid cash. So the bank would incentivize you to save by giving you a high interest rate because the value for your liquid cash bank in Azadim is other okay because liquid cash isn't as easily available. Money supply has gone down. So because of you know, money supply going down, liquid cash not as easily available, it would incentivize you to save by increasing the interest rate because it really needs your liquid cash. And at the same time, it wouldn't be that, uh, it wouldn't, it, it isn't as easy for the bank to lend out because it could be pass liquid cash come so lend out. Kya so the amount of loan that does give, it would charge a higher interest rate on them because uh, it's more difficult for the bank to provide a loan. So it, it really wants to earn well on that, right? So also the interest rate increases again, which is why a decrease in money supply can intuitively be explained to have an increase in interest rates by looking at money of uh, the commercial bank. Okay, but that was just concept wise. Um, what's relevant here, ke, you know, money supply is better, interest rates come more, interest rates come more. Ke. Consumption should uh, should increase because come here interest rates, so you know, there's less point of saving. The cost of con, uh, of, of consuming is less. The opportunity cost of consuming, sorry. Uh, so you instead of saving more of your disposable income, you consume more of it. At the same time, it's easier to borrow and invest. So investment increases, which should ensure your AD increases. And so so C. So C should be your answer. When do you see it? Let's quickly check if you've got anything wrong. Um, so 11C, 12C, 13C, 14D, 15D, A, A, B, C, C. Yeah, and I think we're all good. And just 10 questions left now. We'll do that in the next video.